Hi friends, welcome on board for another project, dynamic temperature and relay control and monitoring over Wi-Fi. It means you can connect this circuit to your local Wi-Fi, uh, local Wi-Fi network using your SSID and password. When you connect this device, the router assigns an IP address for this module, I mean this ESP module. When you visit the IP address, it loads a web page for you. Using that web page, you can dynamically monitor the temperature and control this relay. Of course, you can connect this relay using this terminal to an external device, and that device could be DC or even AC. I designed the schematic and PCB for this circuit using Altium Designer and shared the PCB with my friends to receive their edits and feedbacks using Altium 365, the cloud space. At the moment, I explain the board just briefly. In the next step, I will go through the schematic and PCB. Then I will show you how the device works. So here is the input connector, USB Type-C. It means you can simply connect a USB Type-C cable to this connector and uh, power the board. So here is my uh, mobile phone charger and it powers the board. It means the power, the input power is 5 volts. Got it? Uh, then the voltage comes through this part. It's an input filtering stage, and here is the regulator. The relay uh, powers itself from the 5 volts rail, and regulator is a 3.3 volts regulator to power the ESP01 module and this uh, temperature sensor. The temperature sensor is DS18B20 digital sensor, so this one. So simply connect the sensor to uh, this connector, XH connector, like this. And as I told you, any external device, if you like, to this terminal. Uh, these two buttons, the top one is to, uh, is to flash the ESP, and the second is the reset button. And this circuit is, to, is that relay driver. Let me see the back side. Nothing special on the back side except for these passive components, these two decoupling capacitors for the temperature sensor and these two pull down resistors for the uh, uh, USB type C connector. Okay, I think I covered most of the points. In the next step, I will go through the schematic and PCB. Just stay tuned. All right, here is the homepage of Altium Designer, where you have access to all of these nice tutorials. If you don't have the Altium on your computer, you don't need to use any cracked version because illegal copies are full of bugs and they're very likely they will infect your computer with viruses and trojans. So instead of that, just follow this link in my YouTube video description and fill out a form. That allows you to download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license that of course includes the Altium 365. Anyway, let's go to the schematic. Here's the schematic diagram and this one is the PCB layout. As you know, with each project, I also publish an article. So just follow this link in my YouTube video description and read the article because I explain some points in the article to avoid uh, elongating the video and make it boring. Before I go to the PCB, I want to check the specification, specifications of this regulator in the Octopart because it's a very nice and cheap regulator. I recommend you to use this uh, part number in your projects. So it is RT916633. So RT... 91, 91, 66, 33, GX. Yes, it's a, a LDO low drop 
regulator from Glitch Tech 3.3300 milliamps and the package is SOT89 and 300 milliamps is uh, very nice for some for I can say the majority of digital projects for small projects and look at the price for the quantity of one and this distributor the price is seven cents and you can check for the other quantities for if you buy 100 the price is this so everything in front of your eyes in one page okay and also you can build bill of materials for free so you add all of the components in your bill of materials and export it using this website and everything is free anyway let's go to the pcb so here is the pcb layout and as you can see it's a two layers pcb board the red is the top layer and blue is the bottom layer let me show you the board size here it says the horizontal size is five centimeters and the vertical size is four centimeters so it's a compact board and you can fit this board in a variety of enclosures i have followed several pcb design rules to design this PCB. The first thing is the decoupling capacitors. This circuit has two main components. The first is the ESP module and the second is the temperature sensor. I have implemented and considered decoupling capacitors for this, these two components. And the decoupling capacitors should be as close as possible to the supply pin. So for this temperature sensor, these two capacitors are decoupling. The second point is the grounding. As you reduce the length of the ground pass, it means you reduce the noise and you help, the, to, you help to enhance the performance of the PCB. That's why I put these wires in several areas and especially near the criti critical components near the decoupling capacitors, bypass capacitors, and even near the push buttons. All of these techniques are to reduce the length of the ground path. The last point is the clearance. My assumption was that you might connect an AC load to this terminal, so I had to consider a clearance between uh, the terminal and the tracks and the rest of the PCB and the rest of the board uh, so here is the ground so I think this clearance is enough all right this is the Arduino code you don't need to write anything from the screen because I have put this code to download in the article so just check the article let me explain it a little bit as you see I have included several libraries here and the most important one is this ESP8266 library. So it means you must select this board from the board manager, generic ESP8266 module. Okay, then I think it's clear that you should enter the SSID and password of your local Wi-Fi network here. So your SSID and password, I think it's clear. This index.h contains the web page, the code of the web page. And here you can change the refresh rate of the uh, temperature value. So it means the temperature value gets updated every second. 1000 means 1000 millisecond or one second. The rest of the code is HTML, CSS, and AJAX. You can change the style of the web page by your desire the rest is the configuration of the http server so just uh, if the uh, device can connect itself and register itself on your wi-fi router and wi-fi network it gets an ip and you just visit the ip and you will see the web page i will show you the web page in the next step so just stay tuned Alright, here is the live demonstration of operation 
of the board. As you can see, I have connected a USB Type-C cable to the board. Actually, it is my mobile charger and it powers the board. Uh, so here is the temperature sensor and etc. This is the web page. The IP address of the board in my case is this one. 192.168.111 and this is a Firefox browser. It doesn't matter, you can visit this IP address on, on your mobile phone, on Chrome or whatever other browsers. Now I put my hand on the temperature sensor to show you the update or refresh rate of the temperature value. Do you see that? The temperature data or temperature value updates itself every second and it goes up. Now let me show you how I can turn on and off the relay. So this is on. Do you see the LED? It means the relay is on and off. On, off. And this message shows the last state of the relay. On again. So as simple as that. I hope you like this video and build this project and have fun. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and we will do something else in the next video.